Hey, man, I need a fix. I need a fix bad. So you need a fix, huh? Oh, God, man, I need a bad. Look me up. I got your fix. I got your fix right here. Jeep Junkies, we know you're jonesing for a midweek fix, so we're going to hook you up with a little midweek XJ Talk Show to tide you over. This winter, be prepared. The world is no longer as you remember it. We need that other 50% of the population. There is nowhere to hide. You know, you have the ability to use your communications device for something more than a flashlight because that's what a cell phone is going to be when all the cell towers go down. You, you got trees that are four feet in diameter and they got to get them off the trail. Vampires roam. Zombies attack. Glass all over the ground and on the driver's seat. Oh, man. Even in the dark, there is still hope. Gorilla tape. Good versus evil. In order to make this happen, you guys have to go to xjtalkshow.com or by four podcast to save the world for the better. Coming soon this winter. Hey guys, we're back with another interview. It's been a pretty good while since we've had an interview, and uh, actually we're lucky enough uh, that uh, Jesse here was uh, beating up on me saying, hey, I want to be on the show, I want to do an interview, I want to tell you guys about my uh, quarter mile XJ naturally aspirated 4.0 liter engine. Jesse, I don't think it could be done, but before we get into that, <laughs> let's hear let's hear a little bit about you. What uh, uh, your name is Jesse Ryder. Where are you located? And, uh, you know, just some background about yourself. Right on, man. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Jesse Ryder. I'm the owner and chief mechanic of Team XJR out of Eagle Point, Oregon. And um, what we're doing is trying to be a time set by Cherokee XJR of 12.9 in their Turbo XJ. And we're going to do it with a naturally aspirated motor. Now, how in the world do you think you're going to be able to accomplish that? That That is pretty damn fast. Um, the main thing for us is, is finding out what works and what doesn't and um, trying to combine everything together. Uh, right now, we've got a good MSD ignition system on there, uh, Stage 2 can and cold air intake, um, Custom exhaust by Flowmaster. I mean, that was the big thing. Our sponsors, Flowmaster, hooked us up with a modified Scavenger Series header and a full entire uh, header back exhaust system. Um, also running uh, BBK 62 millimeter throttle body, uh, oversized injectors, and uh, a handful of other stuff. Um, one of the biggest things that's going to give us a good amount of horsepower is an aluminum head, and uh, there's only one company that makes those, and that's Hesco. They run you a pretty penny, but it's also a big boost in horsepower. Well, that's interesting. I didn't realize it was a big boost in horsepower. I realize, I mean, I understand the lighter it is and the more horsepower you have, the faster you're going to go, uh, but I didn't realize that uh, that actually was a boost. I guess what I did was I looked at the Hesco head, and I went, oh, so pretty. Oh, God, so expensive turn page, <laughs> move forward in yeah, the browser. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things that, that really helps out with that head is, is being that the four liters run so hot. And um, with that aluminum head, the uh, air fuel mixture is setting off a lot cooler than it would with the cast uh, cast iron one that comes with it. Well, that's interesting. I, I didn't realize that. Uh, hmm. You're getting me thinking here, uh, Jesse. I, I don't want to spend that kind of money. What are those things? They're about a grand, aren't they? Uh, eighteen hundred dollars is uh directly from Hasco. Yeah, they're a pretty penny. You know, it's it's a it's one that's a really really hard to justify. But if you're gonna make it fast, you gotta spend the money. Oh yeah, I mean if you, if you're gonna don't go out there to play unless you're gonna pay. I mean, uh, and it's great that you've got sponsors. You kind of you kind of hit on that. What uh, what sponsors do you have for this uh, this this mad thing that you're trying to do? 
Uh, our biggest supporters and our biggest sponsor is by far Flowmaster, B&M, and Hearst. Um, the people there, you know, they really care about the little guy. Um, our team is small. We got one build that we're working on, Project White Thunder, and, um, you know, later on down the line, we'll probably do an off-road project with a full-size waggy. But, um, yeah, I mean, Flowmaster, those are our, our people. I mean, they're just great. And, uh, you know, every time we're in a crunch, they always got our back. So, I mean, big shout-out to those guys. Oh, that's great. It's great to hear, too, because uh, this isn't a money-making deal for you. This is just a hobby that you're trying to do. And uh, the sponsors have jumped in and, and helped you out, which is uh, just great to hear, surprising to hear. It's it's very nice to, to know that somebody can have a dream, and uh, all you have to do is uh, – uh, be driven towards that dream, and uh, there's uh, companies that'll help you out. I mean, I'm sure it'll help them to uh, sell their product, and I, I know it's not a altruistic uh, endeavor that they're going for here. They they want to promote their product, but you know, I could see them doing that towards somebody that had uh, oh gee, I don't know, a hundred thousand dollar XJ trying to uh, out on the Bonne- Bonneville salt flats trying to break seven hundred miles an hour. Now, did I just give you an hey. idea, Jesse? Is that what you might try in the future? <laughs> 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 you know, um, you you really nailed it. I mean, uh, there's so many people out there with a lot more uh, financial backing and, and a lot more, uh, you know, available to them. This is something that I fund uh, out of my pocket, uh, all our bills. I mean, as far as parts go, we get help from time to time. But uh, it, you're, you're right. I mean, this is a, a hobby of mine. It's something that makes me happy, and I enjoy doing and, uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're the definition of mom and pop, you know, just starting out and doing what we love. Well, tell me what you've done so far. Now, I believe you said you, you've already done some 13, 13 second quarter miles. Is that true? As of right now, we're running a 13, nine and a quarter mile. Um, I want to try and lighten up the XJ without butchering it because, you know, I, I love my Jeep. Um, we have our, uh, the PCM is performance program by Super Chips, and I'm also running a flash pack, which helps out a lot with the motor running at its full potential. You know, it's letting it know just how far it can go, and that, that was a big boost for us. Well, that's interesting. I, uh, I might actually talk to you a bit about that offline. I've been having some issues with mine since I put my crane cam and, uh, 60 over pistons and uh it sounds like i didn't realize that somebody could flash the ecm on those things that might be worth me getting one and and letting them do some stuff to it see if i can't uh, open mine up a little bit and that's the thing a lot of the stuff that we've done to this project is stuff that people didn't know was available for the 4.0 um for example the header we're running um they don't usually fit. It's the Scavenger series from Flowmaster. They usually only fit Wranglers, and the Texas Flowmaster actually modified a few of the pipes so everything would clear. So my XJ is the only one running that particular header in the whole entire world. Well, that's interesting that you mentioned the Wrangler because it seems to me that's the thing you see most people uh, doing super modifications to. You know, you're making it very torquey. I'm sure we've all seen the video where the uh, the Wrangler's in the parking lot doing a, a, a tight circle, and he actually flips the thing because of the torque and the uh, uh, from the engine. So uh, yeah. I, f- I think it's really cool that you're you're uh, taking this uh, brick and trying to move it down the uh, the track so fast. Yeah, and you know, um, I've I've caught uh, a lot of jokes and whatnot. Uh, you know, well, why don't you just do it to a muscle car or something? And, and the thing is, I mean, I got my first Jeep when I was. 15 years old it was a 76 j10 full-size truck and uh i've been in love with jeeps my whole life um when i bought the cherokee it was a factory two-wheel drive and the first thing that came to mind is let's make it fast you know i'm a big fan of muscle cars i'm a big fan of mopar and you know i i want to be different i want to break stereotypes that you know, Jeeps are only jacked up. I mean, I love off-roading, but, I mean, this is something that uh, a lot of people don't see. Yeah. Well, we've uh, we've actually had uh, Matt Adair from uh, Petty Cash Racing uh, on our show before, and that was another deal where somebody was taking a, a Jeep Cherokee and taking it out to the track, the same track that uh, you see these uh, uh, high-paid uh, racers with their high-paid automobiles racing around it, and, and they were going out uh, and this 
Le Mans race, uh, Lemon said a certain way, <laughs> and, and driving for 24 hours, uh, at, at yep. racing it. And uh, it was an amazing thing to hear. I had no idea. You know, I've just got my little Cherokee and my little uh, four-wheel drive corner of the world, and uh, here I'm hearing about uh, people racing and uh, quarter-mile racing, and uh, hey, I think it's great. I mean, I don't know if everybody did, but I think when we were all first getting into automobiles, that was the thing that was the most exciting to us because how fast can you go in that quarter mile or half mile or, you know, whatever it was, uh, usually right. on the street, but <laughs> you know, you have to, you have to learn and grow up. Uh, I personally got out of doing that stuff because, uh, I didn't ever think I was going to kill myself. I figured I was going to kill somebody else, either a passenger or somebody I hit. Uh, so that's right. the reason why I got into trucks and Jeeps was because I needed something that I could, uh, not go, not feel like I needed to go really fast in. Right. Right. Yeah. Understood. I mean, um, uh, usually with my project, it, people either love it or they hate it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that say Jeeps are for going fast and, you know, it, it's, it's pretty much correct, but the thing is, I mean, the 4-liter engine is such a great engine. There's so much out there that you can do to it, and a lot of people have said, well, you know, drop a small block in it, and it's like, well, that takes away from the originality of what we're trying to do. We're exactly. trying to take the original power plant and just beef it up as much as we can and, and just make it something that's breaking the mold. Now, is this a stroker, or did you say something or a post or something about going to a stroker in the future? Um, after in, in August, we're going to be trying to break uh, Cherokee XJR's twelve point nine seg quarter mile run, and we're going to do it in a naturally aspirated four liter. After that's done, we're going to turn it into a four point eight stroker with a Eaton M ninety supercharger on it. And um, I've talked to a lot of techs, and they said it can be done. One of the things you got to do is run a smaller pulley, and get you'll get about nine to eleven psi out of it, forced induction. Okay. Now let me ask you. I don't want to go too far off on the technical side of the side of things, but um, I've I've learned because of what I was uh, doing with my engine that the springs that come uh, with the four point oh head really aren't strong enough for much of a cam. In fact, with right. the, the crane cam that I'm running, I'm at the edge, and I think that's what's causing my problem. I kind of have a uh, – it almost seems like a valve floating issue between 4200 and 4500. After 4500, it lights right up all the way to 5000, which isn't very far, but you can physically feel that it's taken off. And right. uh, but, but during that, uh, that very 2,500 RPM time frame, it's, it almost feels like it's going backwards. So I right. don't know if it's springs or if it's the computer or what. Now, you've had to have tackled this problem. Oh, excuse me? You have had to have tackled this problem with the, the, the weak springs on the head. You know, um, as far as, as with the PCM and the horsepower that we put into it, um, we're still working out some bugs. But um, I mean, nothing really too major. It's just uh, it's just a matter of trying to tune everything in so I don't blow the thing up or break something. You know, I got to <laughs> yeah. be able to go down the track successfully. So basically, you haven't had an issue with any valve floating because the springs aren't uh, uh, strong enough or quick enough. Are you using stock springs on yours? Yes, yes. Um, we haven't really dipped into the internals too much. But um, it's a low mileage XJ um, that might, you know, have some help in our scenario. Okay, cool. Well, I was just uh, just wondering about that. I figured that you had run across the same issue uh, that I did. Of course, I don't know for sure that it's a spring issue. It may it may be something else. the The cam could be throwing off the timing enough where the computer is getting confused about the timing. I don't know. One of the things I've right. got to figure we're definitely, out. We're definitely on a learn-as-we-go type of curve. You know, there's some stuff that don't work, and, you know, you got to get back to the drawing books and, and you know, find something that is going to be successful in the, in, in the engine. Now, you mentioned earlier that you don't want to really trash your XJ, so this sound, kind of sounds like a daily driver. I've really figured you were stripping this thing to the bare bones, maybe putting a, a small cage in it just to be safe and uh, just really ripping the weight off of it. But it doesn't sound like you're going that direction. You know, sir, you're exactly right. Um, this is my daily driver. I drive it to work every day. Um, 
The thing with it that, that is definitely beneficial to me, being a two-wheel drive, it's about 600 pounds lighter than a four-wheel drive XJ, just due to the four-wheel drive components, you know, TKs, uh, front axle, stuff like that. Um, we weigh in, car and driver, uh, with my jack and subwoofers and everything, right around 3,200 pounds. Yeah, that's the nice thing about unibodies. You don't have that uh, heavy frame. Now, uh, yeah, come to think of it, unibodies, do you have any problem with flex? I don't know how much uh, how much torque you're getting out of this thing, but uh, have you done anything to the unibody or, or plans to do anything to the unibody to try to keep it from flexing um, as much? We haven't really done anything structurally yet. Um, I, have a good, I have a good welder uh, that I, I'm in cahoots with that, um, you know, it, when that day comes, and we do have to do some reinforcement. Um, you know, that'll be also something that goes on the drawing board. Okay. Well, at least it's something that you've uh, you've already thought about. Yeah, I was just curious. I, I, I may be it may be uh, several uh, thousand horsepower and a lot more uh, uh, torque feet that uh, requires that. But it crossed my mind that uh, I know when you take them out and wheel them and you twist them up, you can kind of cause a a weakening of the uh, the unibody. And uh, I could well imagine that uh, going down the uh, the track uh, could uh, repeatedly could do the same thing. Correct, correct. Yeah, we want to do a cage eventually. That'll probably be after we do a forced induction and really go crazy with the horsepower. Um, probably a cage, you know, and and just do some minor reinforcements where where it counts, you know, so we don't damage anything as far as uh, you know twisting the thing in half. So this thing still has the glass and everything in it, and, and as far as long-term plans, you don't ever plan on having this not be a daily driver, do you? No, no. Um, actually, after uh, after the forced induction, uh, we're not going to go too much crazier with it. Um, we actually put it up to a vote uh, with our fans to either build a full-size off-road project, like a Wagoneer or something, or a Mopar or AMC muscle car, a Javelin or a Duster or something like that. We really want our fans to kind of, you know, make the choice for us because we're open to anything. Well, that's kind of the way it is over at xgtalk.com. We uh, we love it when people come in and say, hey, help me spend money. What should I do to my Jeep? Because <laughs> we all right. have ideas yeah. with other people's money. <laughs> So I think that's a great thing about the Jeep community is we can all, you know, share what we've done with each other and get new ideas, and it keeps it fresh, you know, and, and that's one thing I love about Jeeps in general, and there's always so much you can do to make it your own. Absolutely. I think it's a wonderful idea. Of course, I'm a big uh, Jeep Cherokee fan uh, as well as a Wrangler fan, but I think it's really cool that you, you're taking something that, uh, you know, they made nearly three million of these things, and uh, mm-hmm. people are still doing uh, off the wall uh, things that people say can't be done. Why are you messing with this? Use a Mustang. Yep. Use a Charger. Anything other than a Jeep. And then uh, people are just blown away whenever the uh, the Cherokee uh, comes out on top, uh, or at least close to the top. And we're talking about the XJ people, not that 2014 thing. Maybe in 15 years we'll be talking about it, but I kind of doubt it. Hey Jesse, that let's. Thing uh, is, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, go oh, ahead. Go ahead, sir. No, I want to hear what you were going to say about the 2014. You know, um, I, I can't justify that being a Jeep. Uh, I just, I grew up with, you know, rugged, reliable, four-wheel drive vehicles, or just the, the way Jeep should be. And seeing this grocery getter crossover, whatever it is, I mean, it's, it's a shame. It, it really is. You know, I'll stick to my old school real Jeeps and uh, leave that thing for whoever's buying them. Well, thank God they made so many of them, so they, we should have them to play with for a very long time, and uh, we can just uh, ignore that uh, bastardized child that uh, Jeep has made. Hey, Jesse, I, 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 know, there's, more. Yeah, I know there's ways that uh, people can uh, keep up with you. Uh, online, uh, how can uh, people contact you? How can they watch what you're doing? How they how can they get information as uh, as they need it from you? Um, everybody, please, please feel free to get on Facebook and uh, like our page. It's Team XJR, and uh, picture of White Thunder will be his uh, um, profile picture. Um, also, we're going to be setting up a YouTube channel just to show our test runs and and builds. You know, as far as anybody that's interested in following that. 
Um, in August sometime, not a specific date yet, we'll be going to set that record or break that record, I should say. And, uh, I'll be sharing that on the page. So yeah, mostly our Facebook page is, uh, where you guys can find us and please feel free to check us out. Well, Jesse, can we talk you into coming over to uh, xjtalk.com and being a member and uh, posting up over there as well? Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. That's great. Well, thank you very much for being with us tonight. And uh, I know uh, just from the uh, uh, the post that I put up on Facebook earlier before our interview, and uh, must have had 20 or 30 replies from people, uh, that uh, everybody's really excited about this. It's got to be a wonderful feeling to be doing something that you love and to have so many people interested uh, and, and wanting to hear more about it and wishing you so so much uh, so well and uh, hoping that you reach your goal, and I'm quite sure you will. Oh, sir, I, right back to you. I appreciate this opportunity, and, and your show is great. I um, also wanted to you know let the people know we, we appreciate all your support. A lot of people see the XJ, and uh, you know they're like, wow. This is the real deal. You know, people hear about a race Jeep and then they say, you know, well, that's silly. And then they see it and they're like, wow, you know, this is uh this is a real stuff. <laughs> that's great. Thanks again, Jesse. Thank you, sir.